Today, we're looking at the performance of two different machines on CPU-only inference, and we've evaluated the Z440 that brought up a lot of questions. A lot of those questions were around the new digits that's coming out from NVIDIA soon, and some of the AMD dedicated chips, and of course, Macs, and a lot of other things that all have one commonality for inference, and that is system bandwidth. And today, I'm gonna to demonstrate pretty effectively, I hope, the difference in system bandwidth and its impact on the generation of tokens per second through a couple of different models, very similar to what we did recently with the Z440. You can find links to all this stuff in the description below and huge shout out to all of our channel members. Be sure you drop your comment. Let me know your questions around this. I've seen tons of questions, especially around what is the digits performance and especially the 128 gigabyte 395 plus halo from AMD. What is that performance gonna be like? So today we're gonna to be looking at the tokens per second that can be generated that should encompass those systems bandwidth. So that right there is the key. That should encompass those systems bandwidth. So you should be able to estimate if we're at 260, 230, 280 for one of those systems, what the difference is. The reason why is the 7702 Epic that we've got over here with all of its RAM channels populated, that's eight RAM channels that it's got on that particular board, that gives us about 200 gigabytes per second. On the eight RAM channels populated with DDR5, on the 7995WX, that gives us, well, quite a bit more, probably in the neighborhood of about 400 gigabytes per second of extra system bandwidth. And we can see this coming through and manifesting pretty well in our first warmup with Gemma 312 b and that's the new QAT, which is essentially a Q4, but with the qualities of apparently the FP16. You can see that we were at response tokens of set per second of 16.28 and prompt tokens per second of 89. And that was on the Threadripper. On the Epic, we were at about 10.3 and our prompt tokens were about 13.91. Both of these have the same pinned seed, the same settings for everything. So the output should look pretty darn lined up here. And if we run Olama PS on both of these machines, you can see how much is being utilized right now. And these are running purely in CPU, and that is 12 gigabytes. Our context window, to keep it the same as the tests that we did for the Z440, we started out doing CPU inference on a $2,000 rig, and now it's down to a $500 rig. Of course, we saw the performance about half, so that is quite a bit of difference. But when you're looking at CPU inference, on smaller models especially, it's actually something you should definitely consider, even if you've got a Ryzen, even if you've got an Intel just, you know, desktop system. And while there are GPUs plugged in here, they're all disconnected from this right now, so there's no GPUs being used for this. It would say that they were all in GPU and not CPU, if that were the case. Next up, we're gonna try out Mistral Small 3.1. This is their latest. And this is a 24B, but in our settings that we've got here for it, it's gonna be at 14.4 gigabytes because this is a Q4 again. And all of the settings, like I mentioned, the same. So let's, let's give this a run here and see what kind of tokens per second we can get on that. We'll also fire up a Llama PS down here so you can see the RAM footprint. So we're now at 26 gigabytes, well, I can hear it, kicking up on the 7995WX, and we got about 10.22 tokens per second and about 44 tokens per second on the prompt tokens per second. So that's fairly decent. Now let's see what it comes in at on the Epic. You can see this difference in time to start up also because really, really fast storage, and I think I've got Gen 3 storage in here that this is reading off of, so loading the model probably takes a little bit of extra time on this versus that is probably darn near instantaneous. And we're about, yeah, half of that, about 6.82 tokens per second on the response tokens per second, the prompt tokens per second on the Epic, about 16.45. 7702 again here, 64 core, 128 thread, 7995 WX, 96 core, 192 thread. However, I'm only utilizing about 88 cores effectively on that and about 60 cores on this. That really saturates to the NUMA nodes pretty well from what I've been seeing, and there might be a video on that. You guys let me know in the comments below if you're interested on that. Trying to answer some questions here today, so we'll just keep moving on. Next one up that we're gonna tackle is Gemma 3. This is one that I've seen some really, really wild results, like wildly bad. It makes me wonder if there is something to the QAT and the way that it's processed, it seems slower than what it should be for a Q4, if that makes sense. That's kind of a weird way of saying that. And it's only on the 4B that I really see that. And you can see it over here, it seems very staccato. And 
17.54 tokens per second, 209 prompt tokens per second. And over here, we've got 25.2 response tokens per second and 39, almost 40 prompt tokens per second on that. So there's a big difference between these two on the 4B. So I, I don't know exactly what to say about that other than anomalies there be. Uh, you tell me in the comments below what that is. And you can see that that's using 6.2 gigabytes of RAM. Not very much at all. QWQ32B on CPU inference today. This is, of course, the Q4. We're going to give it the same warm-up. It's going to think way too long about it because that's just what QWQ does. And then it'll give us an answer eventually whenever it gets around to it. Check out Olama PS. So that wasn't too bad. That was 22 gigabytes occupied. And we're already thinking on the Threadripper Pro. So I've got to say, the CPU inference for certain things works wonderfully on the Threadripper Pro. For other things, it's very hit or miss. I have a feeling there is a lot that can be tuned there to make an impact. On the Epic, it's more what I would expect. And yeah, 10.22 response tokens per second, 26 uh, prompt tokens per second. I'll set up the next one here since it's going to take forever to finish over there. And we're going to go to the bigger 27B, which actually I think is one that a lot of people are considering right now as a very good model. And you can see we are right about half, right around 5.36 to response tokens per second and 11.44 prompt tokens per second on the QWQ32B Q4. And kick those off. And you can see on the Gemma 3 27B, around eight tokens per second. However, if we come over to the Epic, about five. So we don't see quite double the gain there, which I think that's pretty interesting. Prompt tokens per second, around 16 on the Epic. And if you look at the prompt tokens per second, about 54 over on the Threadripper Pro. So something, I'm not exactly sure what, but I am absolutely certain it is something that is tuned or not tuned uh, on the Threadripper Pro is definitely impacting the tokens per second and the ability of the inference to run really without a hitch. Definitely seeing some hiccups and like starts and stops as it's chunking through things, I feel like. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. But this basically should give you a lot of information around what could be expected or what you might expect or what kind of variances you could see if you're thinking about something like a DGX, if you're thinking about something like uh, one of the new AMDs. So system bandwidth. Now, most of the things that are coming out are build to have somewhere in the 200s, upper 200s to mid 200s to lower 200s of system bandwidth that they should be hitting. That could put them in between one of the two systems. So that hopefully gives you a little bit more knowledge and certainly having a lot of ample space to be able to run something is important, but the performance of what you're able to run in there, I mean, 128. There could be some secret sauce that I just don't know about. Maybe, maybe they're keeping a really good secret. At the end of the day, I have a feeling system bandwidth is yet again going to continue to be what is the performance gauge that is consistent and that is measurable. And at 200-ish gigabytes per second and 400-ish gigabytes per second, these can give you some standard candles. And if you need a little refresher, the system over there, the Z440 that we were using and testing some CPU inference on the other day was hitting somewhere in about 70, 75 gigabytes per second. Well, these are all theoreticals also, but 75 would be its theoretical peak. So really at the end of the day, it kind of comes down to what can you hit for system bandwidth? And so many things like your Ryzen's out there may not be able to run a 24B, but they might be okay running something like an 8 or a 7. And the reason why is because you're Ryzen has, I think your modern Ryzen has probably about 50 to 70 gigabytes per second, very similar to what the Z440 has. So that could be something that if you've got one laying around and you're wondering, hey, I'm GPU poor, what can I run? Well, you might give a try out to some of these models. And when you do, be sure to drop the results in the comments below. I look forward to reading those. And also while you're down there, hit like and subscribe. Big shout out again to all of our channel members. Thank you very much. It makes us possible for us to continue doing this without serving up bunches of sponsored stuff and other things like that. So do appreciate that quite a bit. Everybody have a great rest of your day and I will check you out next time.